With the new werewolf pack coming out this week, we've got a lot of new stuff to look forward to, but I think for me, I am most excited about the new world. I usually am with packs like this because there's just so much stuff to explore and new things to see. I also get really excited and like really into Sims lore and the new townies. And since they've been having Simmers do the builds instead of doing them themselves, the houses are always like way better now. So it's actually fun to go look at. I used to make these like world tour videos and just completely rip apart the EA builds, but I don't have to do that anymore because they're always good. And so I have been saving my reaction to the new world from the werewolf pack for this video. I've seen a few little spoilers and little teasers from the live stream, but really I haven't seen a lot from the new world. And I was thinking that today we could kind of explore Moonwood Mill together. I will say I have clicked on this map view. I, I couldn't help myself, <laughs> but this is Moonwood Mill. It comes with five like actual lots, but from my understanding, a lot of this area is playable. Like I think your Sims can swim in this lake. They can get up here to this area. So it's not a lot, but it's kind of like a lot. It's always kind of weird to me when the maps have like all of the houses and stuff clustered on just one side because it's like what is all of this then like what is all of that over there but I think it helps that it seems like all of this is actually playable area it also appears that we've got one actual towny household one empty starter home a library a bar and then a completely empty lot for starters I say we pop into that starter home okay so here is the starter home this pack comes with it looks like on the inside we've got two bedrooms a bathroom a small living area and a little kitchen this is really nice. It has a lot of stuff in it as well. I'm actually really impressed by the whole exterior. And here's the area around our little house. So there's kind of a big open clearing area. This is beautiful. This world is like genuinely amazing. So around the place, it looks like there's going to be a bunch of these different little like tunnels and cave openings and stuff. I guess this one will take me to the peak of the mountain. Oh, no way. Should I start with that? Travel to the peak. Oh, this is a good spot for your Sims to like get engaged and stuff. Not to like immediately jump to that, but it is. Look at the view. Okay, so over here looks like it's the other proper like lived in house in town. We'll go to that one next. Oh, a Sim. Christopher. Hello. It looks like he came out of one of these underground tunnels. We have to kind of explore and see if we can find all of these. Because from my understanding, your Sim can like pop into this and then potentially pop out from a different one and like learn a path to use as a shortcut around the world. You know what? Go in there. I'll just wait for for you. I'm gonna keep looking around. <laughs> okay, okay, so across this bridge, wow, can you walk there? Oh, no way. Across this bridge, it looks like you come more into, like, the downtown area, and we have a lot of, like, abandoned factory type stuff going on, and this is quite cool because these aren't actually playable lots, but this one is, and it looks like James built this to, like, really match the neighboring buildings. Oh, I found a prehistoric hoof print. Oh, boring. That's just, like, a base game collectible. <laughs> Never mind. Well, there's another bridge over here, kind of on, like, the other side of my house, we live sort of in between both of them. This area is meant to be like the werewolf sparring section. So your Sims, if they're a werewolf, can come down here and spar. My Sim is not. <laughs> I probably should have made one, but I didn't. You can go into these portal potties to explore some more underground tunnels. You can fish down here like Nancy. Oh, we found an exit? Oh, oh, that's where I came in, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. Oh, boring. I wanted to get a different one. And then up here behind that werewolf sparring area is the empty lot. I noticed they talked about how this thing is going to display the phases of the moon on it, which is quite cool. And you can hover over it and it'll tell you. And then this thing has a bunch of like different information about the pack and stuff. We can learn about werebees, view info on Moonwood Mill, you know, classic things like that. This is that werewolf bar and it is a really big lot. Wow. Okay. We'll come to like each of the other lots in a second, but for now I want to kind of walk around the world. It looks like you can actually get down into these areas too. Like I can explore these tunnels all the way down here. I think this here is one of the the hangouts for one of the packs. Oh, this is my first time like actually playing with the pack. I know I've posted videos already with the pack when you're seeing this, but this is my actual first impression. So <laughs> I'm getting kind of excited. So this I think is one of the pack hangouts. I believe this one belongs to the Wild Fangs. Look at all of this back here. You can't actually get back there. It's just like decorative, but it looks pretty cool. Okay. And then I guess kind of across this bridge, I think that this area is the other packs hangout. Oh yeah. Look, I can focus on the pack leader. Oh, that's so useful. You can just click on that main building and then it'll take you to the pack leader so you can more easily find it. Not the welcome wagon. Leave me alone. <laughs> I'm trying to do something. Okay, so you can also swim in this lake down here, which is quite cool. And you can also fish off this dock. I don't think you can get over here. It's just like decorative. But the playable area of this world is actually quite big. I think the last little space that we haven't been to is down here. And I believe this is where Greg lives. <laughs> the ever so suspicious Greg that they keep talking about. Is he out here? Or is it just, do I summon him? <gasps> 
Oh my god, Greg? Greg! Are you good, Greg? Oh, no, 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 no. Don't run away, Greg, come back. Greg, are you getting a frog? Oh, did you just fart from fear? This is a kind of interesting thing they've done in some recent packs where they've had like really important townies with houses, but the house isn't actually real or functional. Like I can't go in here, but Greg just kind of like hangs out here. Cottage Living had this too with like that like guy in the woods that you could buy like llama clothes from <laughs> where he just kind of like hung out in his garden like around this area, but you couldn't actually go into his house. I guess it's a pretty good compromise when you can't add extra lots, but you still want to have have, like active gameplay sort of townies. I'm gonna have to deal with Greg a little bit more later, <laughs> but I want to go look at the other lots in this world. Should we look at the other townie household first? So this is the Volkov family. Christopher has been around longer than most can remember. He founded and leads the Moonwood Collective and is eager to take in any werewolf feeling displaced or lost. Lily joined the household long ago, a lonely wanderer who had lost her closest friends to the vampires. Oh no. After her came Rory, then Jacob. Though Rory's relationship with her adopted father has scoured, Jacob and Chris Christopher's connection has flourished. Both bear the same calm yet intense soul. And everyone in Moonwood Mill knows that Christopher intends for Jacob to be the heir to his pack. Interesting. Okay, so here's Christopher in Cass. Genius, family-oriented perfectionist with the successful lineage aspiration. Okay. We hate purple, but we enjoy gardening and handiness. Here are all of Christopher's outfits. You're quite cool. I won't lie. I'm kind of impressed by this sim. And here's his werewolf form. You look cool. All right, so so here's Jacob, his son. We saw this sim like on the cover and stuff before, obviously. You look pretty cool. I'm so impressed by the cast in this pack. And then this is Jacob's werewolf form. Oh, you're kind of cute. <laughs> look at your little face. So you're a vegetarian and outgoing and you have that emissary of the collective aspiration. Likes cooking and guitar and enjoys the color green. And here's Lily, who's also a part of the collective. Oh my God, she's an elder. Look at her little outfits. You are so cute. I'm sorry that all your friends got killed by vampires. That kind of sucks. Foodie, cheerful, loves the outdoors, likes fishing and handiness, and blue, green, and red. I'm so glad they actually added likes and dislikes to these sims. Okay, so here's Lily's werewolf form. You're actually really cute. <laughs> I like these townies. Oh, okay, so they are all currently hanging out here at their like little hangout spot. All right, relationship wise, it appears Christopher kind of knows Celine, who's the bartender, hates Greg, has a little bit of a strained relationship with Rory, who's also his daughter, but she leads the other pack, obviously is close with Jacob, his son, and Lily, and it seems like Wolfgang, who maybe is also a part of our pack. Oh, wow. So he has the mark of the night, also must be clean, gains fury with poor hygiene, is right with guilt over the werewolf curse? Oh no! And is grumpy. Okay. <laughs> sure. Fair enough. So Christopher feels a little bit hurt by his daughter Rory. Oh no! Oh, but his son Jacob is adoring of him. That's so cute! It seems like they all have skills and stuff as well, and pretty good ones, which I'm kind of impressed by. Also, Christopher is a freelance programmer, which kind of amuses me. All right, here is our house. It's called the Collective Cabin. It looks like on the outside. Oh, there's cool terrain stuff going on in here too. James did such a good job with these. So on the outside, we've got like a little garden space. I I wonder if this little like apartment space is supposed to belong to Lily. I love the new assets from this pack. Okay, and then when you actually come into the house, we have this front door right here, which I am obsessed with, by the way. Straight ahead, we have a little kitchen, dining room space. To the left, we've got this little living room. Oh, wow, look at that bookshelf. Oh, that's cool. I haven't looked at any of the build items yet, so I'm really excited about this. We also have this little desk nook over here, and then we have a bigger bathroom in the front of the house. And then upstairs, we've got three bedrooms. We've got like the main bedroom and then two kids rooms. This one looks a little bit abandoned because I assume it used to be Rory's, but she doesn't live here anymore. That's so cool. I love the storyline behind this. I love like the detail put into this. This is what I'm talking about when I say I want lore. I am obsessed with this kind of thing. Okay, let's go to manage worlds and see if there's any other townies that are just like in the world, but not in the world. Okay, there are a few actually. We obviously have Rory. Most of Moonwood Mill knows Rory as the leader of the Wild Fangs, but she first arrived as a confused young werewolf under the care of Christopher. He tried to counsel control and to nurture her like one of his garden flowers, but the two grew apart as Rory grew up. His ideals and values stifled her inner wolf until Rory chose to listen to the beast inside her and moved out to form her own pack. Nowadays, Rory may seem like she has it all figured out, but deep down, she's still discovering how to be the leader she always wished Christopher could have been. Oh, that's so cool! We also have Dan Howell here. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's, it's Lou. Lou Howell. Shortly after 
Lou's arrival in Moonwood Mill, he tried to impress his date Celine by taunting the town's notoriously feral werewolf Greg. His poor decision led to painful consequences for both him and Celine. But while she sought a remedy, Lou figured he could just ride this one out, which didn't turn out as anticipated. Will this master of mischief learn to love his new inner wolf, or will he try and find a way out of the mess he's found himself in? Okay, so it sounds like he and Celine were dating. He got turned by Greg. She did not, <laughs> because she sought out a remedy. And Celine is the bartender in town. I saw that on the live stream. Ever since she was a little girl, Celine has been fascinated by romanticized tales of lycanthropy. However, she got more than she bargained for while on a midnight date in the woods. Thankfully, she discovered an antidote which prevented her transformation. She's more cautious now, but her position as the local barkeep gives her a front row view to the wondrous world of werewolves without the risk of injury. This is so much fun. I love the, like, the detail in this. Alex Moyer is not involved. I may as well just delete you. And we also have Wilder here. It says, Wolfgang has lived in Moonwood Mill for decades, where he's been documenting the history of werewolves and trying to give them a brighter future. A famous author who specializes in werewolf fiction, his books have introduced the idea of the friendly neighborhood werewolf into popular culture. Because he uses a pen name, nobody realizes that he himself is actually the very thing he champions. Oh my god! So they added a bunch of books into the werewolf pack too? So I guess this guy is the author of them? That is so I'm obsessed with this, you have no idea. This kind of lore, this kind of detail is exactly what I have dreamed of. All right, we have a couple more lots to go see. This one is the library, the Moonwood Mill Library. So it sort of has this like abandoned factory kind of vibe. I am really impressed by the detail on this. Even like these, we have this new like ceiling rail sort of spandrel. It looks like on the outside, there's a bit of a tunnel down here which is cool because there's a lot of that going on in this whole world. It seems there is also an observatory here because although we have a new telescope, it's still kind of fun to have this sort of thing. And this lot feels appropriate for it, I won't lie. If there's one place you're gonna have one of those, it would probably be here. <laughs> in the wolf pack on the library lot, you know? There's also a rooftop you can access though that seems to have its own telescope. And then when you actually come inside, it looks like this is the front door. So we have like a little library-ish sort of sitting space. It's got some old couches, chess tables, some bookshelves. To the right, there's like a little sort of abandoned garden kind of room. That is a really cool space. Then we have this huge bathroom with showers even. Okay, down here we have some computers and things. I love the mismatch matched furniture in here. And then out this way, there's even a gym. I like that because it's nice to have like multifunctional lots in a space like this, because obviously this, this world is very small. So it's nice to have this library that also functions as a gym if you needed to. Upstairs is just some more seating and stuff, but a few skill building objects. It seems like we have this little like easel and things. And then down here in this basement, I don't know. Do you just what, like sit in this little cushy leather chair? <laughs> I'm kind of impressed by this space though. I feel like James did a really good job making this feel super realistic and also blend in really well to the world. Like this just feels like it totally fits in in this whole space. And it's got all the things you need. I'm, I'm impressed, especially by the multifunctional space, how it's like a gym and a library. That's gonna come in handy. All right, and this one is the Grimtooth Bar and Bunker. This this lot is huge. This is a 50 by 40 lot and it's set up to be like a bar area basically. So when you come in, it's kind of all like fenced off and you walk up, it's got like a bonfire, some seating. This bar object is so cool because it's like a shell and then you could place any bar into it. I think you could use like base game bars too if you wanted to and they would slot in there. And so because it's just a shell, your sim can still like walk around and then bartend from it. It has this little like hangout space with some more music and stuff playing in it. There's a little tiny like outhouse bathroom back here. But then in the way back, if you come over here, there's like all this cool terrain manipulation. So you can kind of find this bunker almost like buried into the ground. And this is a werewolf door that only wolves can use. And when you actually come in, it takes you down this huge staircase and there's a proper bunker with like everything you need to survive essentially as a werewolf. But I assume you can also like hang out down here because it's like a proper werewolf hangout that nobody else can access. But look, it's got a kitchen, it's got a bathroom. We have like a proper living space. There's even like some skill building objects. There's like a game table and some beds. And then, and then this thing, this connects to those tunnels outside. So you can use this to get outside, like farther away from the basement of this building. Like that tunnel could have you like pop out over here in this one or in, you know, wherever else. <laughs> 
in the world. Oh my gosh. Okay, so first impressions of this world and this pack. Number one, I can tell there's a huge attention to detail with the lore of these sims. It seems like a lot of effort was put into like making them feel very lively and they have proper personalities and backstories and stuff and that is really important to me so I am obsessed with that. But also the world itself is really cool. It also feels pretty big. I know it's just five lots but I like how much open space there is to walk around over here. When you compare this world to like the world that came with vampires Empires, there is absolutely no comparison. Like, this is so much better. There is so much more to do, so much more detail in the townies. Like, this, this so far, just going off of the world and the townies alone, this is like 10 times better than vampires. Overall, I am very impressed by this world. I will say, I don't really see myself playing in this world a lot. I don't mean that as like a bad thing. I just like, I don't really imagine I'll have the average sim live here, <laughs> you know? Just like how I don't have the average sim live in like the vampire world or anything like that. I'm curious to your thoughts in the comments about where this world falls like in your list of favorites. In my opinion, I think this is like arguably one of the better worlds they've done. There's just so much attention to detail in this, even again compared to like Realm of Magic. This just feels so much more lively. I'm gonna stop recording this now because I want to go properly play with the pack, but if you're interested in seeing more werewolves content, I'm gonna be posting it like all week and I've probably already got a couple videos up by the time you see this. This is just the first one I recorded because I wanted to get my like proper reaction to everything in the beginning, so I'll link some of those down below and feel free to subscribe if you like The Sims because I make videos about The Sims 4 literally every day. And with that being said, I will catch you all tomorrow. Bye, everybody. Greg is by far, hands down, the best townie in this pack. There is absolutely no comparison. He is the single greatest one possibly of all time. I love my little grumpy new best friend.